Time we press on with our conversation about Sam Bankman Freed, who defrauded Americans of billions upon billions of dollars, allegedly. That's what prosecutors are going to argue when his trial begins. Uh, back now uh, with a former federal prosecutor on this. Um, what do we make of Bankman Freed's defense that this was just an accounting error? I think that's going to be a hard, hard uh, proposition to sell. I mean, the government's got a a very strong case here. It's got high-level cooperators who are going to give the jury an inside view of the, the scheme to defraud and efforts by Bankman to conceal what he knew were arguably illegal activities. Uh, it's got emails and texts and things of that nature. And then, of course, it's got the financial um, transactions, records of the financial transactions themselves. So, uh, you know, kind of a follow-the-money story. I think the government's got the proverbial slam dunk of a case here. The Defense, on the other hand, is going to you know try to accuse, distract, and confuse the jury. But uh, in the face of the evidence that uh, it's looking at, I think it's going to have a very hard sell doing that. Yeah. Colby, I'm glad to have you because it just makes me chuckle when you watch the financial news commentators, especially who ha appear to have not had any ability to learn on this one, and then there is just this incredible hubris about people like Sam Bankman-Fried that they just salivate over in order to get access to, and then when it turns out they're complete frauds, oh, well, nobody knew. It's stunning. I mean, uh, it's not just Samuel Bankman-Fried who's uh, on trial here. It's really the financial media who are just as complicit in sort of lending their credibility to this guy. Now, this is not a crypto sort of fraud. It's a financial fraud under the guise of crypto. And these dudes, namely Kevin O'Leary and uh, you know James Kramer, they went up. They got fully behind SBF, helped him make billions and billions of dollars, and then the moment that it turned south, just completely sort of threw him under the rug and said, "Oh, that's it," and then never spoke to him again about him again. And I, you know, the the lack of accountability by the financial media, who li literally are just speculating and, and making stuff up. Is shocking, and in Canada, mm -hmm. we should look into this. It's it's really embarrassing, and it's it's unhealthy for our financial system. Yeah, you think about Elizabeth Holmes and others. You know, Elizabeth Holmes didn't steal from common investors. She took a lot of rich guys for a ride. But Bankman Freed really hurt, hurt, really hurt a lot of people. Adam, as you look through this case and the documents there, were there red flags that the financial media should have been picking up on? in this that they they didn't perhaps because they didn't want to see him they were too interested in the interview i think not just the financial media but institutional investors got taken as well you know i think sometimes when things look really good um people want to believe it's uh, you know an implicit bias there mm -hmm. and uh until there's a reason to look under the hood no one does and usually at that point in time it's too late and that's what happened here yeah, well, too too late for so many people, not too late for a lot of people to uh, sell a lot of books and do a lot of interviews with him. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Coming up Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.